Hi, today's lecture is about the anatomy and physiology of the ear. The first thing you have to understand about the ear is that it's divided into three general areas, outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. The outer ear includes a portion of the ear that we normally see, which is the auricle and pinna area, and the ear canal. The auricle pinna area is made up of primarily cartilage, and its primary job is to collect and direct sound waves traveling in ear into the ear canal or external auditory meatus. The external auditory canal is about an inch and a quarter and about a quarter inch in diameter. It's primarily responsible for directing airborne sound waves towards the eardrum. It also has a couple of other main functions. One is to maintain the temperature and humidity. Uh, which is very important for maintaining the elasticity of the tympanic membrane. You don't want this area getting dried, not only can We also have glands produced in the, this area called ceraminous glands, which produce earwax. And also in this area, you have tiny hairs in the ear canal providing extra protection against insects and foreign particles from damaging the tympanic membrane. The middle ear consists of these auditory ossicles, the malleus, pincus, and stapes. The tympanic membrane right here, this is the divider between the outer ear and the middle ear. One has to understand the eardrum is very sensitive to sound waves and vibrates back and forth as sound waves strike it. And if there's extra loud sound coming in there, you risk the possibility of rupturing this eardrum. Or some individuals sometimes poke pencils, bobby pins, different structures in here. You want to be really careful because if you puncture this, you lose that connection, closed connection, and you expose the middle ear if there is an opening here to uh, infections. And not only that, you have decreased hearing because now you lost your tense uh, vibration auditory. Also. The middle ear is also an extension of the nasopharynx. Uh, this area right here is called the eustachian tube. This tube is responsible for maintaining the air pressure and also helping ventilate the middle ear. Normally the tube is closed but opens while someone is chewing or swallowing. When this tube is open, the air pressure between the outer and middle ear is equalized. The transmission of sound through the eardrum is optimal when the air pressure is usually equalized between the outer and middle ear. The auditory ossicles over here is important for transmitting sounds to the inner ear. These guys, once again, are called the malleus, incus, and stapes. The malleus bone is attached to the tympanic membrane. The foot plate of the stapes, right here, inserts into the oval window of the inner ear. The incus is the bone connecting the malleus and stapes. Attached to the auditory ossicles are two tiny muscles which are very important. This, you don't see it in this diagram but they are called the stapedius muscle and the tensor tympani muscles. These muscles contract to provide the inner ear by reducing the intensity of the sound transmission to the inner ear from the external sounds and vocal transmission. So imagine you're going to a rock concert these muscles kind of give and take a little bit this side and this side, just so you don't blow your eardrum. The inner ear consists of this snail looking structure called the cochlea, vestibular, vestibular apparatus, and you don't see them too well here, but these are three semicircular canals. And the vestibular portion combined with the semicircular canals is very important for balance and the cochlea is the primary structure that's important for hearing. You have two structures over here, two nerve, one going to the vestibular apparatus and one going to the cochlea. This is called the vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve number eight. This is going to the brain and it's regulating the balance and hearing components. Of the cochlea is an interesting structure. It is composed of three fluid filled chambers that extend the length of the structure. The two outer chambers are filled with fluid 
called perilymph, which acts as a cushioning agent for the delicate structures that occupy the center chamber. It is important to note that the perilymph is connected to the cerebral spinal fluid that surrounds the brain and the spinal column. Third fluid filled chamber is the center chamber called the cochlear duct in this area. The cochlear duct secretes a fluid called endolymph which fills in this chamber. There is an important structure inside the cochlear duct at the base of the membrane called the organ of corti. The organ of corti is a sensory organ essential to hearing. So this is a basic breakdown, breakdown of the outer middle. The, the process, process of hearing involves sound waves creating mechanical motions that cause fluid in the ear to move in waves and trigger nerve impulses that the brain interprets as sound. The outer ear functions to funnel sound waves. The vibrations from these waves reach the middle ear and move the tympanic membrane, also called the eardrum. This causes three bones, called the auditory ossicles, to also move. The bones make contact with a fluid-filled structure in the inner ear called the cochlea. The mechanical movements of the auditory ossicles move fluid inside the cochlea. Fluid waves move hair cells that line the cochlea. The movement of these cells activates nervous system receptors. Signals are carried through the vestibulocochlear nerve, cranial nerve 8, to the temporal lobe of the brain, where they're interpreted as sound.